Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Did you know you can support the channel by joining? If you enjoy the videos, it's something to think about. On to the stories. Case file number 868, written by Confused Confuzzled. Classic Quantum Immortality. Okay, so bear with me here. My husband and I were traveling back, a six hour drive, from visiting family. I was driving. I kept having a very vivid flash of a place pop into my head where an 18-wheeler loses control and we have a head-on collision. In this flash image, I see it coming, can't move out of the way and just look at my husband and say, baby, I love you. To note, I am a very comfortable driver. This started pretty much as soon as we hit the road. We reach an intersection maybe two to three hours into the drive, and I recognize it from the image that popped into my head earlier. Exactly where that image showed the trailer truck hitting us head on, I felt that the car suddenly jumped. Like as if I had just lost control, I felt a bit woozy and it felt like the car jerked forward. No accident happened, but it made me wonder. A friend once mentioned the possibility of dying suddenly and waking up, so to speak, as if nothing had happened like jumping into the next dimension. That experience on the road was weird. My husband noticed nothing. He insisted the car never jerked, nothing felt off to him, it was a normal drive. So did we dimensionally travel after a head-on collision into an exact or almost exact replica of our dimension? Case notes for file 868. Classic Quantum Immortality. So, meaning that your husband didn't notice anything, somehow you're the only one who died in the car. Or, he jumped as well, but to a different universe. And I, I've been wondering that for quite a while. People are connected by, you know, physical distance or rather emotional connection, a bond of friendship or love. Are they then transported to a, the same parallel universe when they die through quantum immortality? I like to hope that they do. It's kind of neat in a way, right? If uh, two people die, to have that universal bond baked within the universe itself. Nice. Usually the glitches I've read indicate this, but maybe not all the time. Or maybe he didn't die as well. I mean, you're in a car, but it doesn't necessarily mean if you get into a crash that both people will die. Sometimes one person does and the other doesn't. That could explain it. Bonus file. Written by Booze and Booze. To Tyler, the best friend in the multiverse. I'm sure a lot of you reading this can relate to losing someone. I've definitely endured quite a bit of loss throughout my life, though this specific one hit harder than the ones before and has taken a while to come to terms with. In 2019, I received a phone call late at night from a close friend of mine. Levi wasn't the type to call, he was more of a texter. So when I saw his name flashing on my cell phone at 2am, I knew it couldn't be good. I picked up the phone, walked out of my bedroom, and went into the next room to take the call so I wouldn't wake up my girlfriend and our newborn. I was told within the first 20 seconds of the call there had been an accident and our friend Tyler was gone. I went from half asleep to wide awake in a split second. What? Gone? What the hell does that even mean, Levi? I got angry, I got pissed because I didn't believe him until he told me again that Tyler was gone. There was an accident when he was driving and he died. He told me himself and a few others of a friend group who were all at his house. He told me I could come over if I wanted to. After we got off the phone, I fell to the floor. I was in complete shock and disbelief. There's no way that this is happening. This isn't real. A few moments later, I went back into my bedroom, picked up my four month old sleeping son, walked downstairs to sit in our recliner and just bawled my eyes out for hours. Tyler had been texting me that night. He asked me what I was up to around 9 or 10. Myself and my girlfriend were just on the couch playing Overcooked on the Switch. I had asked him the same about what he was doing. He responded that he was drunk, and I assumed he was just at his house or someone else's. He was a very social dude and loved to be out and about drinking with people. He was loved by many and a friend to all. I had removed myself mostly from that lifestyle because of getting into a serious relationship and having my first child. I had fallen asleep while we were messaging back and forth and his last message read, You winning? I never thought to ask where he was or if he needed a ride. He wrecked his truck on the way home from the bar that night, just an hour or so after that last message was sent to my phone. 
The guilt of not asking him if he was okay and if he needed a ride or anything, just freaking assuming he was good. That guilt took over my life and consumed me to the point where I was now drinking heavily myself on a regular basis. Whiskey every single night, blacking out to numb the pain and guilt. I almost lost my job. I stopped taking care of myself. Most importantly, I stopped being a good partner and father. My girlfriend at one point had had her car packed with all her belongings and my son's, telling me to say goodbye to him as I was wasted sitting in my garage. Somehow, I was fortunate enough that she ended up staying and I slowly got my crap together. Fast forward to a few years later. Throughout this time, I would occasionally talk to Tyler, whether that be in my head silently or even out loud at times when I was alone, asking him to please tell me you're okay. Somehow, find a way, please. I had come to terms with his death, but I didn't have that closure and reassurance still, if that makes any sense. I had a few dreams where I thought he was there, but it felt cloudy and I would forget a lot if not all of the details of said dream. However, a few months back I had another dream, one so real, so vivid about him. This is strange and hard to explain, but we are all giant nerds coupled with heavy levels of sarcasm within my friend group. Stupid, childish, immature, sarcastic humor is the norm. So when my dream started off with me and Tyler walking into a bathroom together and then both walking up to a toilet and seeing a huge log, we both started yelling, ooh, and dying of laughter. I know it's weird, but it was just us. Then all of a sudden, the back of the wall behind the toilet opened up like a door. The bathroom completely disappeared in front of us. The most amazingly beautiful scenery lay before me. Huge mountains, lush green grass, and gorgeous blue skies. Picture that first time in Breath of the Wild when Link walks up to the edge of the mountain and you get that first look of how beautiful that world was. Tyler turned to me and didn't say a word, but just looked at me. I knew instantly, without him even speaking, that he had to leave, go back into this place, and that I couldn't follow him. You don't have to go, man. Please don't. Stay here for a little longer. I was pleading with him. He still said nothing, just smiled and walked into that world and kept eye contact with me as the door closed back up. The dream immediately faded to black and I woke up. Tyler was 27 when he left us. He was a great friend. We spent so much time together over the years, good times far outweighing the bad, and I could spend hours telling stories about the stupid crap we got into and somehow got out of. This is the first time I've told this story. I believe he visited me that last time to tell me he's okay. Tyler, I love you man. I miss you every single freaking day. I cannot wait till we meet again, my friend. Case notes for the bonus file. To Tyler, the best friend in the multiverse. Wow, what a story. I just want to say first off that I'm very sorry for your loss and really, you shouldn't blame yourself. I know it's hard not to, survivor's guilt, but it's not your fault. You were just having a decent night with your wife and you know like you say you're not in that environment anymore of partying and drinking. It's uh, very sad what happened, it really is, but it's not your fault. I just hope you know that now. I think maybe that's what Tyler wanted you to understand, you know he's in a better place now and he doesn't blame you in any way. Now as to whether this was an actual message from Tyler or just your mind conjuring up a scenario that would give you that closure that you desperately want, my gut instinct does say that it was indeed Tyler. As we're dreaming, the interface to higher dimensions, to other realms, maybe even parallel universes is more open I guess you could say. So those would be the moments where something higher level would interact with us. Most people think that when we're dreaming, the brain calms down and winds down, but actually it's the opposite. The brain becomes more active, more engaged, trying to make sense of the prior days and weeks events and organize them, determine what to keep in memory and what to discard and just making sense of the world. So it is a time where there'd be moments to talk, let's say. Could all that ensemble of chaos trying to be organized be influenced by some other entity? I, I think so, absolutely. It makes sense too in the way that he showed you, through humor, crude as it may be, and through beautiful vistas of the games you used to play together. Breath of the Wild is indeed beautiful. That opening cinematic where you're showing the world that you can explore is really cool. And that's yours truly, Kinetic Symphony, signing off for the night. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the videos.
More to come.